It's not blast off quite yet for the Launcher 1 rocket, but when it does leave Cornwall, drop from this modified version 747, it will make history as the first ever satellite launch from UK soil. Assuming that is, they get their long-awaited launch licenses from the Civil Aviation Authority. Given that you haven't got the license yet, is this definitely going to happen? So, uh, yes, of course it is. We're on track to deliver a launch in 2022, which has always been our objective. Today they let the cameras in as final checks are carried out on the rocket nose, housing nine satellites. The RAF flew in the main body of the rocket last month, a rocket assembled in California, where Richard Branson's Virgin Orbit release. Release, release, release. has already honed its technique of dropping rockets at 30,000 feet before being fired into space. TVC is in first stage looking good. We had a pretty awesome view up here. Now in the rapidly expanding small satellite market, 1,500 were launched last year. Virgin Orbit wants Cornwall to be its main European spaceport. And when this does finally happen, barring any unexpected developments, then this rocket's launch from here in Newquay will be seen not just as a truly iconic moment in the British space story. The ambition is that it will kickstart a whole new era for the British space economy. The vision is for up to seven satellite launching spaceports around the UK. Some, like Newquay, deploying rockets using planes. Others, like those in Scotland, launching from the ground. The space economy in the UK is worth over £16.5 billion pounds, and it employs 47,000 people across the sector. And by anchoring uh, small satellite launch capability here in the UK, that will enable us to be the leading provider of small satellite launch in Europe. Nobody's managed to do that before from Europe, so it's a very exciting time for us. Of the satellites due to be launched from the UK, one will be the first ever made in Wales. A tech startup from Cardiff, Spaceforge, will use this as a dress rehearsal. Its aim, ultimately, to have returnable satellites making new so-called super materials in space. Microgravity, you have the purest vacuum you can get. And so when you combine this ultra clean environment with this kind of ultra benign gravity, you can make new materials. So whether that's proteins, whether it's pharmaceuticals, whether it's alloys, whether it's semiconductor wafers, they all grow better in space. And over their lifetime, they're going to be saving thousands of times more CO2 than it took to create them in the first place. Amidst boasts of a clean industrial revolution, in Cornwall they want, they say, to make this the most sustainable spaceport in the world. The thing is, with satellites and with space technology, it's doing a huge amount of work towards you know, the Earth becoming more sustainable, while making heavy polluting industries more efficient, for instance, to monitoring who's, who's out there doing bad things in an unbiased way. And the irony in the industry at the minute is these rockets that are putting these technologies into space are impacting the environment, and that's what fundamentally we want to change. So as a start, we're using an existing airport as our footprint, and then we're using this amazing system behind me here, which again is just upgrading an airplane to take a ro rocket partway to space. MPs recently criticised the government's approach to space policy as disjointed and unclear. But the UK, which is a big player in small satellite manufacturing, may soon have its own indigenous launch sites. The image of this rocket igniting for many in the sector would signal a remarkable breakthrough.